morning, everyone. So my name is Bolun, a research analyst uh, from MIFAS. And today we'll be sharing more about the um, ETF focus list. Right, so more about ETF focus list, uh, which contains the best in class uh, ETFs. And it will be served as the starting point for your investment journey. So here's the outline of the presentation today. I'll start off by giving a brief overview of what are ETFs before moving on to share about how to go about selecting the right ETFs for yourselves. Last but not least, I'll be sharing uh, snippets of our ETF focus list for 2023, which can guide you through your investment journey. So without further ado, let us begin with a brief overview of what are ETFs. So an ETF is a basket of securities that tracks an underlying index, providing investors with an access to a portfolio of stocks, bonds, commodities, or even currencies. So most ETFs today are passively managed to produce a return to replicate its underlying index. And the underlying index can be a market index like um, the STI or the S&P 500, or even an index for a specific sector or industry like the Hang Seng Tech Index, which tracks a basket of Chinese technology stocks. So there are various types of ETFs uh, that allow investors like you and I to reach every corner of the market. And the most common type of ETFs will be equity ETFs, which generally track a particular equity market or a specific industry. Of course, there are also fixed income ETFs which track um, a corporate bond market or a government bond market. So ETFs can provide exposure to alternative assets as well that can serve as a hedge to your portfolio, such as commodities and currencies. So given that there are so many ETFs um, today from various exchanges, choosing the right ETF might be a daunting task. And given that not all ETFs are made equal, I would like to share with you a few factors to consider when selecting an ETF. And this is also the methodology that we use to select uh, the ETFs for our ETFs focus list. So when choosing an uh, ETF, we look at both quantitative and qualitative factors. Under the quantitative factors, we consider the expense ratio, the liquidity, as well as the tracking difference. So first for expense ratio, this is usually the general uh, annual cost that investors have to pay in order to cover the ETFs the operating costs and management fees. And this is why we prefer ETFs that have a low expense ratio. Assuming all else is equal, the lower the cost, the higher the returns. Secondly, a factor to consider is liquidity, so which refers to how easy it is to buy or sell an ETF. We prefer ETFs that are more liquid, which means that they should have higher average daily volume as well as tighter BR spreads. Lastly, we also consider the tracking difference which is the difference between the ETS performance and the performance of its underlying index. All ETS will have a tracking difference, which usually arises due to factors like expense ratio, rebalancing costs, currency hedging costs, securities lending, and so forth. Having a smaller uh, beta spread and tracking difference will also be more desirable, which as this means that the ETS performance generally uh, have a better tracking of the ETF and uh, security itself. So after considering the quantitative factors, we'll move on to the qualitative factors, which are the choice of the ETF as well as the structure of the ETF. So first off, it is important to consider the choice of index. The underlying index must be a good representation of the market and sector that the ETF is intended to track. For example, if you want to access uh, to Chinese technology stocks, the Hang Seng Tech Index will be actually more relevant than say just the general Hang Seng Index. And one way to gauge the underlying exposure is to look at the investment objective as well as uh, the top, top 10 holdings uh, of the ETF itself. So next under qualitative factors, we also consider the structure of the ETF as ETFs can either be uh, physical or synthetic. Of course, the majority of ETFs are, are physical, which means that they hold the actual underlying securities that make up the index. However, there are also synthetic uh, ETFs, which rely on derivatives, um, such as swaps, to execute its investment strategy. This allows investors to gain exposure to illiquid and hard to access markets. Okay, so this sums up the factors that we consider uh, in our ETF se selection methodology. And with this, I hope that I've given you a better idea about how to go about selecting ETFs. And we have reached the highlight of the presentation, which is the latest edition of our ETF focus list. 
So as mentioned by JP, uh, to help guide investors on our investment journey, we first introduced our ETF focus list in 2018, whereby we have seen through thousands of ETFs, uh, which has only increased over the years, and then identified the best in class ETFs. To ensure that our recommendations uh, remain relevant and up to date, we refresh this on an annual basis. So I'll, touch, I'll start off with uh, some of the core equity holdings. So firstly, we've made changes to the China HR recommendation. As a house, if you read our articles uh, and our uh, online media uh, articles, although we've maintained a negative view uh, on Chinese equities ever since late 2022, we are positive on the onshore Chinese HRs. So Chinese HRs refers to stocks listed on either the Shanghai or Shenzhen Stock Exchange. And one of the most commonly used benchmarks or indices would be the CSI 300 index, which tracks the top 300 companies traded on the Shanghai and Shenzhen Stock Exchange. So as China moves towards a top-down uh, state-controlled economy, it is now more important than ever to align the portfolios with Chinese priorities. And that means investing more in uh, SOEs and companies that operate in favored uh, industries such as green energy, electric vehicles, semiconductors, advanced manufacturing, and automation. And it's worth noting that the Asian market should continue to enjoy policy support given President Xi's desire to develop a robust onshore capital market to boost tech fundraising. And given that most of the companies found in the Asian market are found in the 3SI 300, we believe that the onshore uh, market might perform better than the offshore market. So in the last year, we recommended the iShares Core uh, CSI 300 ETF. So this year, uh, the reason why we have decided to recommend an onshore listed ETF, the e Fund CSI 300 ETF, is because uh, it has a low expense ratio, larger AUM and liquidity, and we generally think it's more liquid and uh, a better uh, holding. So, I mean, for investors who have already been investing in the iShares Core CSI 300 ETF uh, for their regular savings plan, or simply just prefer an ETF on not listed in the Chinese exchanges, it is still a good uh, option as uh, it, is, uh, it tracks the CSI 300 index and has a huge uh, AUM and liquidity. So next, uh, we made a change to our recommended ETF uh, for the digital economy under core equity. So I know, as, as you have all known, despite the poor performance uh, last year in 2022, investors continue to love uh, technology stocks as they are often associated with growth and capital appreciation. So although growth and technology stocks are likely to meet challenges ahead in the near term, um, it is difficult to deny their growing importance in the world that we live in today. Therefore, we believe that the digital economy still remains an important piece of the global economy as well as investors' portfolios. So across the longer term horizon, we remain tech optimistic on tech stocks, especially the larger and more profitable names, which are better positioned to weather the upcoming storm. Therefore, we recommend the Invesco Nasdaq Internet ETF, PNQI, which has a majority of its allocation to the big tech companies. So last year, our recommended ETF was the Alps Oceans Global Internet ETF. Now, the reason we uh, made this change was because the Invesco Nasdaq Internet ETF has a larger allocation to the big tech companies. And we believe this um, will be better to weather the storm in the near term as well as the -term, mid longer term. Although the um, Invesco Nasdaq ETF has a high expense, expense ratio at 0.6%, um, it makes up most of the differences by having a larger liquidity as well as AUM. So uh, as well, for the US quality, we also added an another two subcategories, the US quality and US value into co-equity uh, holding. So high quality companies generally tend to experience uh, smaller earnings that decline relative to other companies, especially during tough times or the upcoming recession. Furthermore, they have also have a proven track record of having a lower maximum drawdown even during recessions. And sectors found in the US value composition uh, have remained resilient in earnings uh, throughout history and throughout the past few recessions as compared to the growth and longer duration names like the growth stocks. So we believe that higher for longer inflation and interest rates are pushing the US economy uh, to the brink of a recession. And these are times where exposure to high quality and value companies may be beneficial to investors' portfolios. So for the US quality, 
um, we recommend the JP Morgan US Quality Factor ETF, uh, ticker symbol JQUA. And for the US value sector, we recommend the Vanguard Value ETF, ticker symbol VTV. Next, uh, we have, we're done with the core equity changes. Next, we move on to the fixed income category, where we have removed uh, the subcategory China property bonds. So the reason for this is because uh, we have taken a more defensive stance on high yield bonds issued by Chinese property developers. Moving forward, the property sector's role in driving China's economy is expected to diminish, coupled with weak liquidity profiles and authority, authority staff stance on the sector. We believe that there may be substantial risk involved in investing in an ETF that is focused solely on China property bonds. Now, investors who still wish to gain exposure to the bonds may opt for a more diversified instrument, such as our instrument, the IHS Barclays Capital, USD Asia High Yield Bond Index ETF. Next, under regional equity, given the delisting of our recommended ETF, the Spider FTSE Z Greater China ETF, and the lack of viable ETFs on our platform, we have decided to remove the Greater China subcategory altogether. And for investors who are still keen in this region can head over to our recommended fund list, which will also be going through a refresh later this year. Next, we have decided to revamp the commodity category as we felt that more could be done to make it more comprehensive and representative of this space. In order to provide a more holistic view of the commodity category, we have moved agribusiness and metals from the technical place category. Through the recommended ETS for these um, respective subcategories remain the same. And for the energy subcategory, instead of an ETF that tracks um, oil futures, we have chosen the energy select um, sectors by the fund, which that tracks the major oil companies. Lastly, in order to provide investors with a more comprehensive ETF that spans the overall commodity space, we added a category called the Global Resources, where we recommend the Spider S&P Global Natural Resources ETF. Besides the changes already mentioned above, we have also made notable changes to the technical place category. Firstly, we have removed um, China banks and China real estate from the technical place category. At present, um, the this category is crowded with uh, China sectorial ETFs. And in line with the removal of China property bonds, we have also opted to remove e this ETF. We believe that in the long term, um, the profitability of private developers is expected to be threatened with China's shift to a top-down state-controlled economy. Next, to condense and streamline the exposure to the US technology sector, we have removed um, US internet and US tech as there are some overlaps with the digital economy subcategory under core equity. So for investors who still um, like exposure to the US technology space, they can look, take, out, take a look at the digital economy ETF under core equity. And besides these removals, we continue to make new additions as well as changes to our list uh, under this category as we foresee strong circular drivers for the following thematic sectors. Firstly, for China electric vehicles. Continuing on last year's inclusion of this subcategory, we continue to believe the Chinese electric vehicle market will be supported by government policies and propelled forward by supply chain integration as well as manufacturing proficiency. This year, we have changed the recommended ETF to the Global X China Electric Vehicle ETF, given its larger uh, assets under management, higher liquidity, as well as low expense ratio. Now, this ETF also consists of only A shares, which is more likely to outperform uh, shares listed on the offshore markets. Next, for Chinese semiconductors, with a similar reasoning to the change we made to the China A shares subcategory, we have opted for an onshore listed ETF as it is most cost efficient for investors. Furthermore, as mentioned above, um, this ETF also consists of only A shares, which is in line with the view that onshore listed ETFs likely perform better. So investors who are keen to invest in this sector can do so using the Guotai Semiconductor Industry ETF. Next, for China Tech, um, we've adopted an onshore listed ETF this year, similar to reasons above. And this year, instead of using an uh, ETF that tracks the Hang Seng Tech Index, 
We have selected the ETF that tracks the Chinex index, which provides investors exposure to onshore listed China Asia technology companies. Investors who are keen to invest in this sector can do so via, via the GF or Guangfa Chinex ETF listed on the Shenzhen Exchange. And last but not least, I will touch on US consumer staples. So this is a new addition to our subcategory, uh, technical place category. We believe that with elevated inflation and rising recession risk, we recommend investors to adopt a more defensive stance. So goods from the consumer staples uh, category should continue to enjoy steady demand even during a recession or even during emergencies of your sin, such as the recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Investors who are keen to invest in this sector can do so via the Consumer Staple Select Sector ETF, ticker symbol XLP. So to view the full list of ETFs in our ETF focus list, please visit our FSM1 homepage. Then go on to the ETFs or Research tab and click on the ETF focus list as shown on the slides. You will, you will then arrive at this page and to navigate, simply switch between the six different categories that we offer as shown here. And that is all. All in all, our ETF focus list uh, serves as a good starting point for investors who are seeking diversified exposure to markets at a low cost. And you may notice that there are some changes in ETFs uh, as compared to last year. They have not, not made the cut into this year's focus list. And if you are still holding on to them, do not worry as there are still viable investment options for your portfolio. These ETFs will continue to be available uh, under the regular savings plan. And with this, I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you all so much for your time. Mm -hmm.